We've seen how enzyme flexibility enables enzymes to accomplish what they accomplish, but enzymes do have constraints that they have to work in. I've mentioned in these presentations numerous times now that enzymes and cells all are governed by the rules, rules of the universe. That is, they can't change the energies of reactions. And so those are true for cells and those are also true for enzymes. Now, enzymes, as we will see, are tricky little things. I've mentioned how enzymes cheat and enzymes are going to cheat with respect to energy as well. So let's consider a reaction of A going to B. In A going to B, this is plotted from an energy perspective on the screen, what you see here. On the left side of the screen, we see a dot placed on the graph showing free energy. That is the energy that's associated with molecule A. In the process of going from A to B, we see that there is a uh, change in the energy, that, it, that the energy is actually increased, and we call this increase in energy, the activation energy that's necessary to get a reaction going. The reaction proceeds, and as the reaction proceeds, we can see that the free energy falls so that we make a product, B, that down by the end has a lower free energy than A had. That meant that energy was released in the process of going from A to B, and this makes this energy, this, this reaction process favorable. Now, it's important to note that this change in free energy that's shown right here, this change in free energy, cannot be changed by an enzyme. That is, there's no change between the starting and ending points of the enzyme. The enzyme does some other things, however. It's also important to note here that this height of the peak is really a critical place. The height of this peak is the place where the reaction can reverse and go backwards from where it came. That is, A can start and then go back. Or B, if it got enough energy, could climb that curve and then go back to A. Otherwise, A is going to go forward to B, and the reaction is going to be is going to be favor is going to be um, uh, occurring. Now, enzymes cheat. Okay, enzymes can change the activation energy. There are no rules about activation energy. Okay, there are rules about beginning and ending energies. But what activation energies changes do is they enable an enzyme to make more molecules more easily go through that transition. That is the magic of enzymes. How do they accomplish that? Well, they accomplish this in a couple of ways. One of the ways that they do it is by the fact that they have binding sites that are very precisely oriented so that the molecules are placed into close proximity that they randomly would not be into close proximity so easily. Uh, so easily. All right? And that means that it takes less energy for them to go through the next step in the process. By doing this, enzymes are able to lower the transition energy. Well, if the transition energy is lowered, it makes it much more easy for A to go to B, as we have seen. You notice again, enzymes have had no change in overall free energy. The energy of A is still A. The energy of B is still B. Okay? Only that transitional state has made a difference. Now, I want to go through and spend some time talking about the mechanism of, of an enzymatic reaction. Mechanism is important to consider because with mechanism, we can begin to see how enzymes are facilitating electronic changes necessary for a chemical reaction to occur. The example I will use is an example of a serine protease. A serine proteases are a class of enzymes that cut proteins. They break peptide bonds. That's what they do. And they break not every peptide bond they see, but they break specific peptide bonds at specific places within the proteins that they bind to. All right, so that means that they have binding specificity. They don't, they don't cut everything that they see. Serine proteases have flexibility. So we saw in the initial illustration the flexibility of an enzyme, and we're going to see it occurring again here as we talk about the mechanism of the serine protease. The electronic environment is very critical for a reaction. In a chemical reaction, electrons are being manipulated, electrons are being moved around, and to be able to do that, one must have the environment for those electrons to readily be able to move around, and we'll see that happening in the active site of the serine protease. Enzymes also use coenzymes. Now, in this reaction, in this um, uh, example I'm going to give, I won't show a coenzyme, but I will say that coenzymes actually help an enzyme to accomplish what it accomplishes. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. 
Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to US MLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.